Hello, RC fans, and welcome back to another edition of Handicapper's Corner, brought to you by the Derby Barn Grill. Special edition it is. It's BC Cup, the 22nd BC Cup. Uh, of course, always on the uh, first Monday of August. Uh, we do have six stakes races on the nine race program. Lots of money up for grabs. And uh, could be a big Sea to Sky pick. There is 69,000 heading into Sunday, so keep an eye on it. Could be over the $80,000 mark by BC Cup Day. Absolutely. And this is one of our, as you mentioned, it's a lot to get excited about. BC Cup is one of our signature events. Probably this and BC Derby Day, yes. Canada Day. Those are our three biggest days of the year. And this one's beautiful because it lands right in the middle of summer. It's going to be a beautiful day. As Mike mentioned, hopefully we get a big carryover on the Sea to Sky pick six, as there will be. You're going to want to go deep in some of these races. Yes. That starts in the fourth race. Uh, I got that right? Four, yeah, five, fourth six, race. Seven, eight, nine. Yep, yep. You got it. Uh, first race we'll jump right into is a maiden $4,000 claiming event for older Colts and Gellies. Going mile and a 16th. Eight of them signed up here. I went to the one awesome cause. Trying long for the first time for trainer Pat Jarvis. He comes out of a very tough maiden eight with keep right on. Adams River Run Footman. Only gets beat in nose by Footman. He just looks like the toughest horse in the race for me, so I landed on him. Feel no shame has to be respected in here. He led the whole way last time for training Rob Maven, whose barn has been heating up. Ran into a very tough Oski in that race, mm -hmm. so he's definitely live. Those are the two I really like in here. And I threw a Peyton's Command in the third spot. Harold Berry's barn has been going very well of late, and uh, he comes out of that same race uh, just getting beat by Feel No Shame. I went 172. Yeah, I put Feel No Shame on top, not with any strong. That, yeah. uh, it's not a, you know, this horse led throughout last time set a pretty solid pace for these kind of horses anytime you're going to 23 and change for the opening quarter it's a little quick for these uh, four thousand dollar maidens but uh, this horse hung on pretty well as you mentioned oski was a big class dropper that ended up winning it so i, I can follow feel no shame back over the one awesome cause this horse is definitely bred to run long uh, de definitely going to love the easier company as well and i put the three horse otis brown claim for eight grand run him for four you Worked well again. Hopefully, he can uh, transpose some of those uh, nice morning workouts into a good performance in the afternoon. I went seven one three, but not a, a <laughs> didn't fall in love with the opener. On to race number two. This is the first of a six stakes races. This is the BC Cup Distaff uh, field of five signed on to go a mile on the sixteenth. I'll go to Arabella's Muse. I, I think Arabella's Muse and Touching Promise are inter interchangeable. Yeah. Uh, the weights are getting a little, uh, you know, they're 122 to 117. They're getting a little far apart. Touching Promise, I thought, was given a kind of a passive ride last time. Let Arabella's Muse run by her at the 5 8 pole. And instead of being the chasey, was the chaser. And when you're dealing with good horses, you want to be the chasey. You want to be yeah. on the lead. You want to be the they one having it, yeah. to be caught. Run around me to beat me. And he, Emmanuel did not do that last time. It maybe he thought, his, thought too much of his filly and maybe didn't think enough of Arabella's muse, who uh, ran on and drew off and won't run a good race. I think those are your two fillies. Put morning coffee in for third. Good run at Emerald. This had so so races here at Hastings. That's my only concern. But. Uh, Morning coffee, you know, off that last race, it was very good. She was yeah. wide the whole race and ran a good one, but uh, still gonna come back to Hastings and face Arabella and touching promise. Tough two four one. I don't know much to add. I see it the same way. I think it's Arabella and usually touching promise. I think it's one of those two. Mm -hmm. In my early pick four tickets, those are the two I would have. And morning coffee definitely off a big second in the Boeing down in Emerald deserves respect in here. I got two four and one. I got the same horses as Mike. Not a lot to add. On to the third. Dogwood. The Dogwood for three-year-old fillies. Again, I think this is a two-horse, uh, you know, have two in your early right. fours. Snuggles and Seattle Claire. They take the blinkers off Seattle Claire. That makes her interesting. Of course, Richard Hamill sticks with her. And Snuggles has done nothing wrong uh, since winning the Fantasy last year. A perfect three for three this year and four in a row going back to the Fantasy last year. She's definitely become a very nice three-year-old filly and a filly that loves the distance. Uh, Seattle Claire kind of ran off a little bit on the head end last time set good fractions in 22 and 4 and 46. i thought uh, admirable effort that she hung on mm -hmm. as, as tough as she did they take the blinkers off her today try and get her to relax a little bit but she is good she has other friends in here that are going to want to press her namely a couple of the swift horses like omi and chianti so i don't see her getting favorable fractions but i did go three four five with snuggles with seattle claire and an honorable mention to omi three four five for me yeah i got the same three snuggles has been nothing short of brilliant there's only been one horse ever beat her at seattle claire and then she loses will likely be to seattle claire, claire again yeah. but uh, snuggles is 
you know, two for two at the distance at a, of a mile and a sixteenth. Uh, seems to do what she needs to do to win. Rico Walcott back in town to ride, and uh, I think Snuggles is going to be pretty dangerous. See Eau Claire. I like the move to blinkers off. At least it might give Richard Hamill some options. She won't be running off a bit early. Uh, she may let Omi go so she doesn't get into the trap with the other Dino yeah. horses and uh, still be able to run a big race. But she's nice. That was a big, as you mentioned, that was a big race she ran last time after setting suicidal fractions. 3-4, and I put, you know, it's a big gap back to the next. I, I, it was either Coco, yeah. Gogo, go or Omi. Uh, I went Omi, but I went 3-4-5. In the dogwood, onto the fourth race. Get my fingers to work Baby here. girls. The two-year-old fillies in the debutante. Uh, of course, always, as usual, with two-year-olds, big field signed on, 10 of them. I'm going to go to the 10, Artistica. Uh, pretty impressed with the way this filly won, uh, going three and a half furlongs. Didn't break great, which is all, which I don't mind. But the way the horse ran up the inside and just you know, ran a good time after not departing the gate all that well. And uh, I, I think Artistica is pretty live. The seven horse, good luck to you, is also super live for Dave Forrester. Has the six furlong victory under her belt, and that's huge. Beat the boys. Uh, that was a big effort. And, uh, she's live in here. Ten and seven for me are just interchangeable. I put the five swagger cat in for third. Has a, a benefit of a race around two turns, which is a big difference. You know, some of the horses in this race have only been around the one turn, going three and a half furlongs. But uh, Swagger Cat for me, I thought was, I don't know, it was the slower half of the split that day because there was two ends of it. Uh, good luck to you on one end, and uh, the odds were even on the other end. There was a full second difference. But uh, that Swagger Cat it got enough experience maybe in that race to, improve, to, to yeah. give her a to give her a shot, so I went 10.75. Yeah, I got similar horses. It's a tough race. I mean, you can make a, a case for a lot of these. I landed on good luck to you because, as you mentioned, the race split, and she was mm -hmm. a second and two-fifths quicker than the other end, and uh, that, that really impressed me. I like the fact she had a start. She came into that race very professionally and drew off, going around two turns, and I don't think that extra half a furlong suited mm -hmm. anything but help her. So I went good luck to you. Over Total Defense, who is a filly, I think that – is going to appreciate stretching out, and Troy Taylor is always very dangerous. Two-year-old stakes, and uh, Aristica, of course, has to be respected in here. I have uh, her in the third spot. Those are the three for me, but, I mean, I. Lee won the first uh, two-year-old race yeah. this year. Looked very good. Something better is coming in from uh, Seattle, or from Seattle, from Edmonton, uh, with a big win, and uh, was bought out of the sale here, and uh, uh, something better is She's uh, got a shot. Mrs. Live. Sport is one that they've had very high numbers for. Forrest went second to good luck for you. To, to you, who at least good luck to you had a race under about Flores. It was the first start. Yeah, Flores is second. another one I could see another running. Another one. Very good, like, yeah. There's a lot of. Anstrom. Mrs. Sport, another one they think very high of. She could get better around two turns. It's so. a good group of two year old it fillies. Is. We got some nice fillies here at Hastings, and it's cool to see. You know, the trip will play a lot into it, and whoever gets fortunate and uh, will win the money. But I went 10, 7, 5, and you went 7, seven 6, 6, and 10. 10. Fifth, a $4,000 claiming event, non-winners of two lifetime for three-year-olds and up, going six furlongs. I landed on the four New Jersey, Joe. Why? Because I always pick him. I didn't pick him last time because Tucci was in there and looked very tough. But he's been knocking on the door. He got beat by Wiley's command who came back to win for eight. Ran into a very tough Tucci last time. This race isn't as tough. I put New Jersey Joe on top of Power to Believe, who was running a big effort off a long layoff. Hadn't run since last this August. This horse was going to be second. This horse was going to be second for sure to Tucci. And uh, hit the rail, kind of tripped himself on the rail, caused uh, Romario Sanders to uh, be injured. Good to see him back in the tack this weekend. Probably the first horse he gets back on. Is yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Kind of. But I, I don't mind Power to Believe. The only worry with, for me with Power to Believe is you never know how horses will react yeah. when they have had a spill. Some are okay, they don't notice it. Huh. Some never really run again. So it'll be interesting to see how Power to Believe rebounds from that race. I got him in the second spot. And I put one big promise, has to be respected here. Two good uh, seconds behind goes way back and lead the pack. He's live in here as well for trainer Barb Heads going back to a sprint. I went four, three, and five. Yeah, I went to the three power to believe. I think the horse can win. I, I don't see a pile of speed in here. I think the six Jackson, maybe the seven, a taller the one might go. Harbor the energy. Uh, he's an interesting horse going back without blinkers. Uh, I don't know. It's just that I see a, a bit of speed, but I think power to believe. I was impressed with the way he was running. Tucci yeah. was all out to run by him. And then he, you know, crashed and burned at the 16th pole, power to believe. Just kind of got green and spooked and saw a shadow maybe. I don't know yeah. exactly what happened, but power to believe Looked didn't like finish the down. race. 
Yeah, Thank no. God, both yeah. uh, both we're, rider and, and horse. Uh, we're okay, but yeah. uh, I'll follow Power to Believe back over the five touching prom or touching promise. One, one is touching promise. promises, brother. But uh, one big promise, uh, not his best distance. Not as gifted as his sister. No, but, definitely uh, not. But uh, they're on the same program today. Actually, there's three of them on the on the card today. Yeah, that's right. Out the of the mayor promise yeah. one. But uh, one big promise should come running on late, uh, whether the six and a half is his bag. He needs to go long. He was entered long. Race didn't fill. Opted to go in the short end. I went three, five, and I give the nine harbor the energy a shot, going without blinkers, as I mentioned, for Antonio Reyes, who does choose this one over one big promise, which is interesting. Three, five, nine for me in the fifth. On to the sixth race, this is the BC Cup Nursery for two-year-olds, uh, going six and a half furlongs. I like the Ford Driller. I've liked him all year yeah. long. Uh, I've picked him each time he's run, and well, he's only run twice, but uh, he is a pretty cool horse that I think will love six and a half furlongs. Uh, I like the other Mel Snow runner, the odds are even, who was a, quite professional in his debut. One going the six furlong trip, and I put the 10 horse, uh, or 11 horse, pardon me, uh, Catch 21, who looked good in his debut going six furlongs. He wasn't embarrassed at all either after kind of a tough trip. Yeah. Mind you, he will have to, you know, get a little lucky from post 11. But uh, uh, I went 4, 2, and, and 11. I really like Driller, though. I think Driller is the horse. I have him in there. I went to I went to the nine straight remark. Very well, Brad. He's a sun gold out of that great mare, remarkable gal. Uh, didn't have an easy trip. It was running against right. horses mostly that started like a star to B who ran a big race, but he did get up to beat her. I think he gets better going around uh, two turns. Uh, for the River's Edge mm -hmm. Racing Stable. He looks professional. I got straight remark on top of Driller and the odds are even your top two horses. The Morales Mel actually rode all three of them. I and mean, it's not like the first time yeah. an, an agent and a rider will make the wrong decision. Yeah. But, but he, he mean, stuck uh, with Driller. He stuck with Driller, yeah. who I, I guess. Uh, but straight remark gets Rico Walcott, so no shame there. There's no, uh, no problem. No downside there. Yeah. I went 9, 4, and 2. We should mention also in this race, Mario Gutierrez returning to Hastings. Kelson. He will be here to ride fresh off his second Kentucky Derby win on Monday aboard Kelson. I went 9, 4, and 2 in the 6th. On to the 7th, the 3-year-old boys turn, the Stellar's J. Going to mile 16th, seven lined up here. I land on the sixth, Lord Vancouver. I know there, he could get pressure in here from BC Charlie. Mm -hmm. There is some, but I just thought a huge effort last time. Led the whole way, going a mile on the 16th, got caught by Opportunistic, who looks like a very nice colt, as we mentioned. He is running on Sunday in Seattle in the Emerald Derby. Uh, and he was well clear of Silvertown, the third horse. So I put Lord Vancouver on top. Dennis Orojo going great guns right now. And uh, he's come back with a nice work since then at 47 and 3. Lord Vancouver for me on top. I've always sunny. Looked very professional in his first start. His second start, he may have bounced a little bit. It was sprinting. Now he gets to go long. He's a full brother to Brass and Gold, who's a winner at classic distances. I see a lot of upside for this horse. I put Always Sunny in the second spot, and I put Stands in command. Didn't want to leave him off the ticket. He's won two already this year, mm -hmm. and uh, just the distance is a question mark for right. him. Is he a closing sprinter? That's why I couldn't put him higher. I went six, four, and one. Yeah, Stands in command's an interesting horse because he, you know, he does, you know, obviously his worst races have been going long, but he's been compromised in both, both. Long he's races, compromised yeah. in the Ascot. And he was also compromised in the Chris Loseth last time by a brutally slow pace. And that's why I didn't fancy him last time. I love the horse, but I just didn't. Yeah. I liked Lord of Vancouver because I thought there would be a, a slow pace. I was right. I got beat by opportunistic. But I just see more pace in here. And uh, I see reason for being for with the, out of the great Tracy Barn, BC Charlie, Lord Vancouver. I see more action up front, which may help stands in command. But I did go to Crazy Prophet, who's another horse I do like. Yeah, he's a, I followed him a lot. He's had some brutal sure. trips. It's, yeah. All year his trips have been awful. But he's a horse that can lay closer than he has been. Uh, he His race, when he, uh, he, when, when he won... Uh, when he broke his maiden, he was right up on the lead. Then he was sitting close in the Ascot graduation. I think that's the trip you want to have. Just behind the Stalking the speed. He's yeah. moved to the John Snowbarn, who have been going great guns. Uh, Salvino Morales will take over in the irons after the barn chains. But I'm going to go with Crazy Prophet to defeat Stans in command. And I put Lord Vancouver uh, in for third. I mean, I like the horse, but I just think don't think he's going to get the favorable pace I scenario. Trip, he had right? every shot last time. Didn't win, and that kind of disappointed me. I know he was 15 to 1. We didn't get three. Three to one on him this time. Do you want to play him at three to yeah. one? You want to play him at fifteen to one when he was an opportunity last time. But I went three one six in the Stellar's J. On to the eighth race. This is the BC Cup Classic. Got to feel the seven. They're gonna all have to chase modern around the track and. Uh, 
while modern is, you know, he's getting up there and weighed a bit, you know, 121, he actually packed that last time. I, I just, you know, he's, um, I thought he ran well last time. He ran really well, actually. Yeah, he got he chased the entire race. way by Crackdown and was still fighting on at the end. Uh, I'm going to go to the three shooting jacket. I picked him in the la on the in the uh, left-handed governors. Uh, I'm the smaller field. I think will help. There is speed in the race with Sabato Allegre. Not a pile of it, but uh, at least shooting jacket will lack traffic and uh, modern's your horse. I no qualm. Yeah, yeah, modern yeah. is the horse to beat. There's the, That's I'm sure. just trying to maybe if you're trying to beat modern. Uh, here's the one that might be able to beat him in a three shooting jacket. I think it's a gap after that to Highway Boss. I went 372. I went to Highway Boss. I'm looking at as well to try and beat Modern. He's going to be a short price, and as you mentioned, he is Modern's definitely live. the yeah, horse to beat super here. Live, but, but I went to Highway Boss. I think Mario Gutierrez is in town to ride him, and I think this horse will just suit Mario perfectly. We've seen him true. do it here Could before. Be big rider change. Yeah. Yeah, and just Mario suits these kind of off the pace horses here at Hastings perfectly. I've seen him do it a million times. Uh, who was the one he kept winning on? Mr. Bowling. Mm. Similar kind of horse, similar running style, and uh, Mario shows up in these big days. He always seems to win one. I got Highway Boss on top of Modern, who, as I mentioned, definitely horse to beat. And I put Don't Hold Me Back to the third spot. I thought a great race last time. He did have a great pace to run at. He got the first kick at Perfect him. Perfect trip. But, uh, still can win. He nice can still win. And that was on the 1st of July. He's come back to work in 58-2. and two. He's you know, got the breeding as a horse that will look like he's going to mature nicely and get better as he gets older. And that seems to be the case. 271 for me in the Classic. The nightcap. Is marathon. the marathon a mile and three eighths? I went to Mark here. He's the only horse who's won at the distance. Guest leading rider Richard Hamill. There's not many horses that want to go a mile three eighths. It's a very rare distance for these horses. And I went to the horse I know can do it. Leading rider Richard Hamill board. I went to Mark on top of Gamby, who's never won at this distance, but does have two seconds, and he's put a very solid. Uh, year mm -hmm. together uh, in his 10 year old year all of his race has been very strong i don't mind gamby in the second spot and i put killarney kid who looks to be the pace of the pace and he's going to carry him a long way can he steal it absolutely i didn't leave him off the ticket i put him in third i went three two and four yeah i ended up in the six what goes around i think this horse is uh, pretty live in this spot uh, he's he another missed... one he's run this race once last year and he ran third so yeah he, he, he missed this race last but, year I mean, because of his, he, he yeah, was yeah. he missed a lot of time and yeah. but then he came out and ran one and a mile and a half uh, in October uh, with Pedro aboard and uh, certainly looked good. And I, I thought he's a horse that has some speed, and I think he can sit a good trip off of the speedy majestic mark. He can sit second. It's not going to be a fast pace, uh, and I just think what goes gets around first crack at gets him. first crack at majestic mark if he does fail. And the way majestic mark ran last time, he may not fail. He ran really well for Roddy Therris. And, uh, but what goes around for me, he's proven he can go that far. He's you know, been running against some pretty good horses. Street map's been sharp. Bear rock and roll's always sharp. Uh, not the greatest of trips last time. I think he's going to get a good trip. I agree with Mark. He's in play here. He hasn't won a race in a long time, but uh, he's a horse that can, that does flourish at this distance. And um, I agree with the four Clarny kid in for third. He's sharp right now. He won a conditional 16 last time, running his open company now. But uh, still, I went six, three, and four to close out the BC Cup. BC Cup 22 at Hastings. Once again, first post at 150. Next up on screen will be a quick look at our uh, a recap of our selections. Back in race number one, I did go to the seven. Feel no shame, seven, one, and three. Race number two, the distaff. One to the two, Arabelle's Muse, two, four, one. Race number three, the Dogwood, three, four, and five. Race number four, the, the Debutante. I went to the 10, Artisti Cat, over the seven. Good luck to you and the five, Swagger Cat. Race number five, I went three, five, and nine. I like the three, Power to Believe. Hopefully, uh, you know, can rebound from that uh, mishap in his last start. Sixth race, the Nursery, and went to the four, Dreller. Over the two, the odds are even. And the 11, Catch 22, race number seven. Uh, the Stellar's J, Crazy Prophet to defeat Stands in Command and Lord Vancouver. Race number eight, the Classic, went to the three shooting jacket. Uh, might be an ambitious pick, but uh, to defeat Modern, who is the best older horse on the ground. So I went three, seven, and two. And in the Marathon in race nine, I went six, three, and four. On to my picks. In the first, I went to the one, Awesome Cause, or the seven, the two. In the second, the older mare steak, I went to the two, Arabella's Muse, or the four, Touching Promise, and the one, Morning Coffee. In the third, the three-year-old Philly steak, I went to the three, Snuggles, over the four, Pseudo Claire, and the five, Omi. 
In the fourth, the two-year-old fillies, I went to the seven. Good luck to you over the six total fence and the ten aristica. In the fifth, I went to the four, New Jersey Joe, over the three and the five. In the sixth, the two-year-old boy's turn. I went to the nine, straight remark, over the four, driller, and the two, the odds are even. In the seventh, the classic, I went to, sorry, not the classic, the three-year-old boy's stick. I went to the six, Lord Vancouver, the four, always sunny, the one stands in command. The eighth, the classic, I went to the two, highway boss, looking for Mario Gutierrez to make a big return big to Hastings Mario. here. Over the seven, modern, and the one, hold me back, and in the nightcap, the ninth, the, uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Endurance race. Marathon. Marathon. I went to the three mark of the two and the four. All right. Thanks, everyone, for tuning in. Hopefully, you've enjoyed uh, the BC Cup edition of uh, Handicappers Corner. Quick reminder, next live card is next Friday night, uh, 7 o'clock, uh, August the 5th. That'll be our next live card. Please do pay attention to the Sea to Sky Pick 6 uh, carryover. It's getting definitely very interesting. Uh, 20, only a 20 cent wage. You got to be a lone winner to get it, but uh, still, it's only a 20 cent wage. And even if you get it, and there's multiple still tickets, get paid. it's still been paying very still well. Still get paid. You're getting yeah. a couple grand, yeah. 800, 900. It's been paying a lot of money, which is good. And, and you don't need to spend a lot of money, and everyone likes to spend a little yeah, to I make think a 20, lot. 30 bucks, you get quite a bit of coverage. You do and, uh, for 20, uh, yeah. 20 cent wager. So do check that out. But our next live card next Friday, August the 5th. Enjoy the, a great weekend at Hastings. Should be a lot of fun. Both days, 150 this weekend. Enjoy BC Cup 22. On behalf of Drew, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you next time here on Handicapper's Corner at the Derby.